Hey folks, Eric here from Dirty Little Sneakers, and I got some mail yesterday that I'm excited to review. GoPro finally released the 11 Mini, and as someone who tends to carry a camera for races, I was excited to get my hands on it and check it out. I mean, a little late for New York City Marathon this year, but I didn't run it anyway, so no big deal. GoPro first announced it was releasing two cameras this season. I was super excited because I assumed that it would be the Hero 11 black, which it was, but then the second would be the updated version of the Max, which is my favorite camera to work with at this point, but alas, it wasn't. For all intents and purposes, this is an updated Hero Session 5, which is this camera here. This is the last stripped down camera that GoPro made, and it was released back in 2015, a full seven years ago. Now I know, Technically, the last stripped down camera that GoPro actually put out was the 10 Black Bones, but that was made for a very specific audience that is to be attached to an FPV drone. So I'm not going to count that one. Now, the biggest difference between this one and the Session 5 is that you could take pictures with the Session 5 and you can't with the 11 Mini. Now, given that the Session is only being sold on third party sites like eBay and Amazon, I figured I would do a comparison between the Mini and the Hero Black 11 or the Hero 11 Black. Before we get into the features, I wanna look at the hardware. So this is clearly gonna be a better camera to carry with you on a run, simply for the fact that it's smaller. I'd like to say that it's lighter too, but the 11 Black is 5.4 ounces and the Mini comes in at 4.7. So that's not something you're gonna notice even after running for upwards of four hours. At any rate, the more compact camera means that you can stow it that much easier than the larger one. Put it in a spy belt, stick it in a pocket, what have you. Uh, of course, with the Mini, you lose the opportunity to frame your shot because there are, well, no screens on the camera. But for me, that's not really a big deal. What I'm filming isn't so specific that I need shots lined up perfectly. And if you remember, GoPro only introduced the onboard screen with the Hero 5. There was an optional screen that you could add to the back of the 4. I don't think it was usable with the 3. I can't really remember, but it's a kind of a moot point at this point. Point being that when running with a GoPro, if you've been doing it for a while, you get a feel for how to hold the camera to get the best shot available. I see the lack of screens, both front and back, as a plus, not a minus. On the Mini, you get two mounting options. There are these fingers on the bottom, as you would expect on a GoPro. But then there's also this extra set here on the back. Now, as running is my main purpose for using the camera, I'm not really sure I see many applications for using the fingers on the back, but I guess it's good to have a second option regardless. Given that there isn't a screen, changing camera modes isn't as easy doing it on the camera itself. You're pressing a lot of buttons to choose and confirm whichever settings you wanna use. I highly recommend using the app to set the camera up. Now let's talk about battery. And that's the major bummer of the Mini. There is no external battery, which means even if the battery they use in the camera is the greatest ever made for any camera, anywhere, anytime, there is still a finite amount of time that you're gonna be able to use it. Eventually the battery will lose charging power and you'll start seeing less time on a full charge. That said, I still use the Session 5 and even the original Session 4 sometimes. Both of these cameras have internal batteries and I haven't seen any issue with drainage yet, but I don't really use them that much. So who knows what it would look like if they were one of my primary cameras. Now the Mini comes with the same kind of battery that comes with the Hero 11 Black. That's the Enduro, which is a 1500 milliamp battery. Now according to GoPro, the best settings for the longest battery life on the Mini is 1080 at 30 FPS. Now that's with Hyper Smooth On, you'll get just under two hours of filming, 114 minutes. Here's a list of all the settings and the expected battery times for the Mini. On the Hero Black, just over two hours at 137 minutes. Here's a list of all of those settings and battery times. But again, as a runner, I'm not filming two hours worth of footage on any of my runs, even marathons. I'm constantly turning the camera on and off. And since the Hero 5, I haven't had any issues with battery life. Hardware wise, there is one more difference, the ability to use the lens mod. Now, right now there is none on the Mini, there's, that is, there's no option to use it on the Mini. But as you can see, the lens mod that fits on the 9, 10, and 11 Hero Blacks fit on this one as well. So I'm guessing there will be a software update coming that will include the use of this lens mod. Okay, hardware check. Let's look at the features and some of the demic software for those features. Both cameras can shoot in 5.3 and 4K, which means you can shoot a super large file to give you many options for cropping. Not, not as many as reframing with the Max, but a good size file so cropping is not gonna get pixelated. Then there's the screen ratios. You get 16, nine, four, three, and new to the 11 series, both cameras have eight, seven. 
for stabilization. Both have the latest stabilizing software, what GoPro is calling HyperSmooth 5.0. So for horizon leveling on both cameras, when they are in linear slash horizon lock, you get 360 degree leveling. But to get 360 degree horizon lock in any other lens mode, you're gonna need the lens mod. And as I mentioned earlier, that is only available on the Hero 11 Black right now, not the Mini. So let's talk about the digital lens options. For both cameras, you get Hyperview, Superview, Wide, Linear, and as I talked about, Linear, plus Horizon Lock and Leveling. Not too shabby. And what's interesting about these two is that you can actually switch the digital lens used in the app after you upload your footage if you're unhappy with the way it was shot. Also pretty cool, and that's a first for GoPro. Actually, I think that might be a first for all of the action cameras on the market. Now, both cameras come with Time Warp 3.0 for sped up moving footage. Both can shoot time lapse for sped up static footage. Both come at night lapse, and both shoot up to 8K slow-mo at either 2.7 or 1080p. So what's included on the 11 Black that's not included on the Mini? You get Hindsight, which captures video from 30 seconds before you press record. You get Live Burst, which is the ability to record a second and a half before and after your shot. And you get Schedule Captures, which means you can schedule the time to start your shot in advance. You get Duration Capture, which chooses how long the camera records before automatically stopping. And GPS Data, which will capture your location, altitude, and speed to add performance stickers to your video in the Quick App. Then you have the new fancy gimmicks that GoPro released with the 11. The star trails, light painting, and vehicle lights. All of these are super cool features, but let's be honest, how many times are you gonna use them? Once, maybe, maybe twice? I don't see me using them at all, actually, so I think it's, for me, it's wasted R&D. All the audio features are pretty much the same, however, you don't get to use an external mic on the Mini because you don't have the option to plug it in. Now, both cameras have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and can be used with the Quick App, and if you have a subscription, auto cloud backup. So which one of these is best for you? Well, what are you using it for? If running is your primary purpose for getting a GoPro, you can save yourself 50 bucks by getting the mini. But are you never using the camera for anything else? You're limiting yourself dramatically by getting the mini. With no ability to take stills and many less features, I don't think it's worth saving the $50. If you have more options on the camera, maybe you'll use it for more things and you never know where your creativity is gonna take you. Nice try GoPro, but I think you missed the mark on this one. The camera just isn't small enough to make that big of a difference. The session was worth it. The mini, not so much. Anyway, so thanks for watching. If you like any of the cameras that I talked about in this video, I put links in the description below. Just know that they are affiliate links, so I'll be making a couple shekels off of each of the sales, but at no charge to you, it just goes to help fund the channel. And if you like this video, I'm obligated by the YouTube Terms of Service to ask you to smash that like button below, get it up into more eyeballs into the YouTube algorithm. I'm also obligated to ask you to subscribe if you like gear reviews, race reviews, New York City Marathon tips, or anything endurance sports related. And to hit that bell next to it so you get notified when I put new videos up. Thanks so much for tuning in, and I'll see you next time.